Thompson. Here. Fasterson. Here. Garnett. Here. Gray. Here. Jerem. Here. Stothard is absent for the moment. Mr. President. Here. Uh, please rise for our Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation by Council Member Festerson. And my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I wanted to take just this time today to acknowledge the Creighton Men's Soccer Team. During a season when we have a lot of football championship games going on, some successful and some not so successful, uh, sometimes a soccer match gets overshadowed, but they've made the Final Four again this year for the second year in a row, which is historic for that program, and play a game on Friday night against Indiana, the only team west of the Missouri River, west of the Mississippi River for that matter, still involved in the championship. So we wish them well and great success in their uh, in seeking a NCAA championship. And I want them to know that their community is all the way behind them. Thanks. City Clerk of Publication and Daily Record, the official newspaper on November 30th, notice for a pre-council and regular city council meeting, December 4th, 2012. A current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in the white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon and welcome to the Omaha City Council. This meeting is conducted in public and by law may only address the topics listed on the published agenda. The council will hear testimony, but will not engage in debate of issues with the public at this meeting. During testimony, it is not appropriate to applaud or convey disapproval. These actions only detect, detract from the formal decorum of the meeting. At this time, please turn off or mute any electronic device. Mr. Clerk. Uh, resolution, item number five, resolution that the Omaha City Council hereby expresses the City of Omaha's firm pledge for peace in the Omaha Douglas County community and encourages the residents, businesses, and organizations within the city to join the community pledge for peace sponsored by the Empowerment Network Omaha 360 Collaborative Partners. Public hearing on agenda item number five begins now. Are there any proponents? Mr. Gray. If I could read the resolution, please. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, it's a really short resolution. Um, as many people know, a number of uh, a number of uh, high schools, uh, Omaha 360, the Empowerment Network, uh, the Omaha Police Division, and others, the police department, and others have been engaged in a collective effort to try and stem uh, control the violence or stem the tide of violence um, in our community. As as you also know, some of our uh, students at South High School, North, uh, Benson, Bryan, um, Northwest, and a number of others uh, have taken the pledge as young people uh, against violence. And uh, this, is, this is an effort to be inclusive and collaborative. Uh, I need to um, uh, recognize and, and uh, thank uh, Mary Ann Borgeson from the, uh, uh, the county board and the county board members who approved this uh, resolution earlier today at their county board meeting. And if I could just read it very quickly, it's resolved by the City Council of the City of Omaha, whereas the Empowerment Network Omaha's 360 Collaborative Partners is sponsoring a community pledge for peace. And whereas far too many lives in our community have been lost to gun violence, and this City Council agrees that everyone needs to join together to help save lives and transform our community. And whereas the City Council desires to join the Empowerment Network Omaha 360 Collaborative Partners in the Community Pledge for Peace in every zip code and neighborhood in the city, and whereas as part of the pledge, this City Council accepts and endorses the goals and strategies stated in the attached Pledge for Peace form and express the City of Omaha's commitment to this critical endeavor. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Omaha that the Omaha City Council hereby expresses the City of Omaha's firm pledge for peace in the Omaha Douglas County community and encourages the residents, businesses, organizations within the city to join the community pledge for peace sponsored by the Empowerment Network 360 Collaborative Partners. And I would like to acknowledge also uh, some of our partners are here in the audience and I may miss a few, but I know the Hope Center is here, members of Impact One, the Empowerment Network, 
the command staff from the Omaha Police Department and others. I know I've missed a few. Uh, our Douglas County Treasurer is here and a number of others. Um, Stacy from the Mayor's Office. Uh, this has been a collaborative effort and we hope to continue that collaboration. And this is an acknowledgement that the City Council intends to be a, a part of that collaboration as well. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Oops, there's a proponent. This is a proponent, pro sir. Opponent. 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 Okay, we have some proponents there uh, that I missed. I'm, I apologize. I didn't move quick enough. <laughs> uh, Willie Barney, um, President Facilitator of the Empowerment Network, and as far as residents, 12333 Cumming Street. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the City Council, um, Councilman Gray and others, for bringing this forward. I appreciate the Douglas County Commissioners for making the formal, formal adoption of the resolution this morning. Um, as Councilman Gray said, a number of partners are here. There are others that will be with us tomorrow as we talk more about the next steps with this pledge. Um, and it may to some sound like, why are you signing a, a pledge? It's just a piece of paper. Um, I want to say to you, over the last five to six years, we have worked collaboratively with well over 300 organizations, neighborhoods, churches, faith institutions across the city. And we've been called on, not only in North Omaha, but South Omaha, West Omaha, Council Bluffs at various times. Um, and, and really in a response in some cases to violence, but more so now working collaboratively in a proactive way. This pledge for peace is the next phase, is expanding what we know has worked. In the summer, thanks to the help of the mayor, the leadership of the mayor, and the help of this city council, we created the Step Up Summer Job Program, and we've been able to, since 2007 to now, go from 30 jobs during the summer to now over 850 with other partnerships. During that time, in Northeast Precinct, there was a 51% reduction in gun violence during the summer, th during those three months when that program was going, 51% reduction. Citywide, there was a 38% reduction in gun violence. When that is going on, when neighborhoods are active, when churches are involved, when stakeholders are involved, when the police department's working together with those stakeholders, we have seen in those targeted areas substantial reductions. And we know that now, how do we expand those efforts? So in September, we launched this Pledge for Peace we're asking organizations, governmental entities, educators, uh, community groups, churches, faith institutions, every single person that we can get in front of to sign this pledge, but not just a pledge. It's not just a pledge for peace, but it's a pledge for action. What are we going to, to do together in a collaborative way to make sure that we do not lose our young people, that we do not lose lives because of gun violence in our city and our county? Um, Omaha has the opportunity because we have incredible resources here, we have incredible people here, we have great leaders here. But our residents, and especially our youth, are counting on us to stand up and say, it is truly time to solve this. We've made some inroads, we've uh, made some progress, it's now time for us to move forward in a more aggressive way St today, so starting with the City Council, um, and moving us forward with this uh, formal pledge for peace and then the actions that will come out of it. So I thank you for your consideration and we look forward to continuing to work with you but at even a more accelerated pace because we cannot afford to lose any more lives in our community because of gun violence. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Barney. Are there any other proponents? Hi, Deborah Neary, uh, 7522 Shirley Street, and um, I come as a citizen who's concerned about gun violence in our community, but also um, I'm with the Midlands Mentoring Partnership, we're a partner with Building Bright Futures, and we represent 12 different mentoring organizations in the community. Part of the action steps that the Empowerment Network has put in place uh, with this resolution is asking everyone in our community, no matter what zip code you live in, to step up and know that this is all of our problems and we all need to take action. And one of the actions we can take is uh, become a mentor. Uh, there's a list of about 10 different ways that every individual in our community can be involved in making a difference. And I just wanted to say thank you for considering this important resolution. I really believe it's important for everyone in our community. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Please state your name and address. Leo Lewis, 5502 North 28th Avenue. I'd like to thank the Empowerment Network and Ben Gray for putting together this pledge for peace. 
my son was a friend of one of the victims of recent violence and it touches my home. So for me, it's important to see that we all come together and, and really make a sincere pledge for peace. And I'm thankful that the city council is willing to be transparent and I wish that this will continue, that the transparency continues and that we all have a dialogue sincerely about not only the recent violence, but also be sincere and have a dialogue about how are we going to curb this violence as well as be transparent with each other financially, fiscally, and emotionally transparent with one another. Again, I thank you and I support this initiative. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Good afternoon. Todd Schmutter, City of Omaha Police Chief, 505 South 15th Street. <coughs> This pledge for peace, while albeit symbolic, it does show an understanding of our problem, and our problem is a community problem. And this, because it's a community problem, it's going to take a community solution. The community, the police department, our elected leaders, our business community, the entire 360. So I appreciate it from on behalf of the police department, as the police chief and my command staff, that this pledge is taken. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Are there any other proponents? Good afternoon. Uh, Morgan Price McGall, 4539 North 36th Avenue. I'm going to read on behalf of our group. Uh, first, first, of course, we would like to applaud the Empowerment Network and Omaha 360 and Mr. Ben Gray um, and their collaborative partners for sponsoring this pledge for peace. Uh, we would like to ask that the city looks at additional solutions with this uh, in order for us to bring about peaceful streets, specifically in the North Omaha area. Um, Looking at the 2012 Omaha Gang Assessment, the University of Nebraska, uh, Omaha's Dr. Simeon and Dr. Hoffman explain some of the issues contributing to unpeaceful streets. The assessment says uh, easy access to guns, gang lifestyle, as well as pockets of students receiving below average grades um, and public education. And higher unemployment rates all contribute to an increase in crime, often resulting in death of young and old men and women. So we'd like to suggest some other efforts towards this is working toward root causes like poverty of destructive, unproductive lifestyles, increasing living wages, jobs for people in the community, specifically those with criminal records, very important, specifically those with criminal records, and improving community race relationships with the police, directly working in areas with higher crime rates, starting by reinstating the police officer. Again, our circle of influence, along with myself, uh, would like for this pledge of peace in Omaha and Douglas County uh, to be the start of the conversation moving forward towards peace and resolving gun violence resulting in death. This can be achieved through the development of strategic and transparent planning. We thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Uh, my name is Lavelle James Wright. I live at 8332 North 107th Avenue. I'm here in my personal capacity. However, uh, in my professional life, I've had the pleasure of working with a number of community partners as the former director of the Office of Violence Prevention for the state, uh, many individuals within the city itself who have individually taken up the banner to uh, stop violence in our community. Uh, and I applaud Omaha 360 for uh, being the focus for uh, the collaboration but uh, that it clearly shows uh, that it takes a community-wide collaborative effort uh, in order to address the risk and resiliency factors related to violence. Uh, as many po folks have stated, it's not just a police issue, it's not just a school issue, it's a community-wide health issue, and that we need a city-wide collaborative and detailed strategy to address the uh, myriad of factors that influence violence in our community. So I want to applaud the City Council for taking up this initiative and encourage them to continue their support for Omaha 360 and developing a long-term collaborative community strategy to fight violence in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? <clears throat> Pete Smog is 1015 Mercer Boulevard, Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, I certainly am in favor of peace and f certainly in favor of uh, nonviolence, but I want to take us a little step further. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, 
And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth to, unto me from the ground. That voice times millions cries unto God in this city, county, state, and nation. The voice of the most vulnerable citizens in this country. The voice of the pre-born child that was killed in the womb. The voice of abortion in this city, county, and state. Brother has killed brother from the very beginning, and that's tragic. It's murder, but it's not legal. But when you have a so-called doctor killing little brothers and Sir. sisters, that's Sir. murder, and it's tragic. But today... Sir, we are here to talk about agenda item number five. And I'm... I'm, I'm s No. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That's not what we're here to talk about today. Would you please leave the podium? Are there any other opponents? Please state your name and address. Deshaun Cunningham, 604 South 22nd Street. I am here to voice my opposition to the Community Pledge for Peace for a number of reasons. The Community Pledge for Peace outsources all responsibility for public safety to the citizens, discounting any public servant from sharing in the duties to solve the problems. For example, the first line of the pledge states, we will encourage parents, family members to make a family commitment to peace and nonviolence. Not once does this pledge do anything to compel those in actual positions of power, such as yourselves, to work towards a solution. This is a way for all of you on the council to save face and pass feel-good, do-nothing legislation. The public, as well as studies from UNO and the United Nations, have all said public safety in Omaha begins with a public police auditor, an independent police auditor, excuse me. Uh, another fault I see with the pledge, it states, Encourage gang members to make a commitment to peace. Join organizations that provide positive opportunities. If three or more gang members are in the same place, it is considered a felony. So how you expect these people to come together, your p pledge doesn't make sense. It's illegal. Uh, there are only going to be more victims of overzealous, unchecked police abuse, abuse until you seven people take the violence in your city seriously. Ben Gray, you have the most face to save. All of North Omaha knows you remain silent regarding Robert Wagner's beating, which you witnessed. Chris Jerram, last February you told me at the OIC regarding Robert Wagner's incident that you would actively do something to reinstate the... Sir, we're out of order here. Sir, we, we need to stick to agenda item number five. Chris Jerram, you said you would actively do something to reinstate the order and you have done nothing. Mr. Grenant. You are a former police officer. You should recognize the need We're for... Here. We're not talking about a police officer. No, you have, Sir. You're done. Yes, yes. You are done. okay. Now, turn the microphone off, turn please. Turn the microphone off. He's done. Sir, you need to leave the podium, please. You need to leave the podium. You need to leave the podium. Can we have him removed, please? No. We've got the sheriff coming right now. Are there any other opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Well, thanks, Mr. President. I'm, of course, supportive of this uh, challenge and peace forum here today. And I think in the wake of our city's 37th homicide and um, some recent heartbreaking incidents like the Ariana Carr incident, uh, it's an appropriate timing. Um, I attended the event uh, assembled by Principal Harkins at Benson High School with Councilman Gray, and it was uh, a touching and heartfelt um, display of support from students all across the city, not just Benson, but all high schools that attended there, as well as many people in the room and the Empowerment Network and many other folks. Um, 
towards that incident, but also in a much grander fashion towards violence in our community and where I first witnessed students coming together to sign these forms and, and that solidarity, solidarity that that's producing. So I welcome this forum today and I plan to check all 11 boxes on there and do all that we can to be supportive of what those students are doing for their community and what we should be doing for our community uh, as a whole. I also want to um, recognize the Ma Police Department too and that using that particular incident as an example, um, a, uh, a suspect was apprehended in a matter of days in that incident and with the community's involvement, uh, which was significant. So that's happened quite frequently recently where the police department is working with the community and apprehending suspects of this senseless violence. And we know they'll continue to do that and we thank them for that. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted people to know as well that when uh, Council Member Thompson and I uh, attended the uh, county board meeting this morning and uh, Commissioner uh, P.J. Morgan uh, made the suggestion and, and Council Member Thompson and I took him up on it um, because he does agree that we have to go beyond just signing a pledge and that there needs to be at least monthly or quarterly um, uh, uh, efforts for our elected officials to get together with uh, law enforcement 360 and others to uh, assess what progress has been made, where we have some pitfalls, some areas that would that that may be we able we, we may be able to collectively uh, address. But uh, there has been and and there will be follow up, and uh, we are we will be working. Uh, Dr. Thompson and I will be working uh, with the uh, with the county board, and I'm not just confining it to Dr. Thompson, and I'm just saying we were the ones that were, we came to the meeting th uh, this morning. And um, we will, um, we're going to continue our efforts to work with the county um, and over e either monthly or quarterly, I think quarterly would be more like it, um, that we would get together and, and take a look at where we are, what, what things are going on, how we may address them from an elected official's capacity because I think we all have a role to play in this. And um, we're going to take uh, uh, Commissioner P.J. Morgan up on that offer. So we will be getting back to this council with some dates and times that we will be getting together to talk about progress and where we go forward and what next steps are. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Mr. Thompson. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I'd like for those who are, are watching in person and also on TV that uh, we want to be more than just uh, about signing a symbolic pledge. We want to actually do something. and. Um, uh, Mr. Gray, you probably don't remember, but I got introduced to this whole s topic in the mid and late 80s, and you had to come and interview my, my knuckleheads over at uh, Fort Omaha, uh, ISC number two. At that time, it was called that. Today, it's called Blackburn Alternative. And if you remember, we had Crips in the morning, and we had Bloods in the afternoon, and at first, we had just a half an hour break in between, but that half an hour meant that they were fighting on the way to and from home. So we had to elongate that break to an hour and a half just so that they could get home and stop gangbanging. And uh, you took under your wing uh, one of those students by the last name of Penn. And uh, so um, I I'm really, really dedicated to this issue. Uh, I've had kids, I had a kid look me straight in the eye once. He was bragging about uh, a, a drive-by shooting. And I told, I said, get in here. Get in my office right now. What are you doing? And I said, well, what if somebody tomorrow does a drive-by shooting against you? And he looked at me and he says, that would be good. And I was shocked. And I said, well, what do you mean? Say that again. And he says, that would be a good thing. And I said, explain. And he says, because then I would die a hero. And that statement shook me. It took me a whole week to get that out of my system, that our kids were thinking like that. So um, I, I, I'm dedicated, and, we've, and yes, we've got to do more than just sign a pledge. We've got a way, got to find a way to get these kids to be um, self-empowered, especially when it comes to talking to each other. Adults can do only so much talking, but in our meetings that we're going to have with the county board, we've got to come up with a way we empower young people to talk to each other. And when they start telling each other enough is enough, then that's when we'll start seeing progress. So I want to encourage uh, everyone, not only up here on the dais, but out in the audience, this is a, a joint problem. It's, it's 
has no political boundaries. It's a, it's a human interest that we've all got to attack. And if we don't, then we all lose. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Grenant. I don't know about my colleagues, but I, I can't just idly sit by here. And opposition approaches the microphone and says that I firmly believe that we need to do something about it. And then in the same breath, become destructive of what we're trying to do. I can truly sit here and look each one of my colleagues in the eye and say to everybody out there in the audience and in TV land, don't forget about the things that we do behind the scenes. We don't always have to be in front of that camera to make a difference. The police officers that are out there, oh yeah, I can hear some of the audience out there now, well, he's just got that blue blood going through him. Well, maybe I do, but I know what they do behind the scenes. And we have seen the folks that watch what government does and come up and say to you and give you the stats, give you the actual facts of what is happening when various programs get into position and they have a time to work. Sure, this is just a piece of paper with a pledge on it and I can go, here Ben, yeah, I could do that. And the rest of my colleagues could do it. Hey, but I signed my name to this and I'm going to do whatever I can to help out. So give us a chance to do some of these things. Maybe it might not be in, in front of those cameras that are over there and seeing that we had to have a couple of people escorted out of here because they wanted to do their own agenda and then uh, do a, an attack individually on people up here. They would have been just better off coming up stating that they were in opposition. And that would have become the part of the official record. But I can sit here and look each and every one of my colleagues in the eye, and I know what they do behind the scenes. I have seen them in action. And not one of them, not one of them, is afraid to go back out into the public and try to do whatever possible that we can with our heart, mind, and soul to stop the violence. And I think one of these things on here that I noticed that, that wasn't alluded to, except just for a minute ago from my colleague, Mr. Thompson, is kids helping kids. Now to me, an adult going out, sure, if someone commits, if a juvenile commits a crime and they're apprehended and they get put into the criminal justice system. That's just the way things are set up. And then it goes on from there. But we have that opportunity of us encouraging our young folks, all portions of our community to go out and embrace this problem and do something with it whatever it might be, whatever small portion, whatever resource that they have. Give it a chance to work. Give the system a chance to work. That's all, that's what at least I'm asking and I'm going to push for when I sign my name to something. Sorry about the passion, Mr. President, but I know what the blue shirts are going through. And I know what various faith community partners are up against and what they're trying to do. And not any of us can sit idly by. If you're not six feet under, you can participate. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Jerome. Well, I guess I didn't get as offended as you did. <laughs> um, I call those I'm over it now. <laughs> um, those are potential red cheek moments, but I guess when you're um, rooted enough in, in the things that you're doing to uh, 
address the issues that those who criticize you seek to um, raise, then you, there's no reason why to, to let it bug you because he was so far off base that I knew that and, and I, knew, I know the work that, that you all do too and, and um, it's interesting to say, well, you know, we're not doing anything. I, just look at our record of the investment we've made and the actions we've taken um, to address the core issues that create violence in our city. The things we're doing to uh, help keep kids who are on the verge of dropping out of school through truancy in school. Um, the things we're doing to provide those who perhaps um, didn't finish school with an opportunity to get their GEDs because of how important education is. The things that we've done in just a few short years to provide uh, workforce training for those who have somehow fallen through the cracks of workforce development. We've revolutionized that. And so by, by keeping kids in school, addressing educational shortfalls, helping those who are without work find work and the training they need to find jobs, you're, you're addressing as a body core issues that, that lead to violence. But make no mistake that there are a core group of hardcore criminals that prowl about this city seeking to destroy lives. And that's why we have very capable people here led by Chief Schmatterer who are dedicating significant resources to identifying those people and making sure that they're met with swift, firm, fair, but adequate punishment to address what they're doing. And thank goodness we have a county attorney who's prosecuting those crimes. And um, for those who, who are not willing to take the pledge, who continue to destroy lives, need to know that we're equally concerned with addressing that issue too. Um, this is only part of the problem. You know, in some respects, you know, people could ask fairly, are you preaching to the choir here today? But I would say no. This is a very, very strong signal that we can send from people who are elected to lead in this community that, that we are doing things. And to underscore some of the other things that we've done in a relatively short period of time and the successes we've heard both publicly, highlighted by Willie Barney, and privately, the information we get from the chief of police as to the successes that they're having. And a lot of the successes that we have in this community are not the type that you, that you hear about on the news. Because it seems like the good news stories get relegated to if there's enough time at the end of the broadcast, they might get 60 seconds. Um, but make no mistake, there, there are a lot of good things going on. And not only the chief, but when you referenced your command staff, and I've worked with several of them, and it's kind of weird, my district I think is the only district in District 3 that has all four precincts in it. And the extra time and effort that your command staff takes to be engaged in the community is something far beyond the call of duty, all in addressing these issues. And not only them, but your crime prevention staff. Um, even as, if it's something as simple as having a little kid throw a ball at a dunk tank to have me or the chief or somebody else or Councilman Gray fall and create a big splash, in some cases a bigger splash than others, um, there, there's all sorts of things that are going on in the community to create the environment that can foster peace. And so I'm happy to sign, sign on to this. And, you know, if those that come down here to take cheap shots, I mean, that speech, you know, is a dangerous thing sometimes. But um, I'm not offended because I know how far off base it was. And I'm happy to support this resolution. And I think it's a great thing that, you, that, that you're doing here today. 
for uh, those of us in, in this chamber today that were at Benson High School uh, the day that we had the original pledge signing uh, ceremony after that young girl had been murdered on uh, Reddick Street. Uh, that was very, very moving. Uh, you know, it's, it's sad to think that we have young adults, uh, young children, basically, that are experiencing some horrible crimes in this city. And it's, it's, you really feel sorry. Uh, it was very, very moving uh, listening to uh, some of that, some of the young girl's friends and uh, describing their loss and, and the family's loss. So, um, but I applaud Mr. Gray, Mr. Thompson both. This is a natural extension here of uh, to get the entire community involved. It's, it's just not our children, and, it's, and it is the entire community. It's, it's our city. Regardless of where you live in Omaha, this is, this is our concern, and we really need to pull together uh, to do what we need to do to stop this and, and get it corrected. So once again, I, I applaud you both. Thank Welcome you very much. Second. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. <laughs> this is zoning ordinance on final reading and planning board attachments, item number 6, ordinance to rezone property located at 3021 Leavenworth Street from GI to CC Community Commercial District A. Planning board, planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 6 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Need a motion. We need a motion. motion Second. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Passed 7 to 0. We'll take items 7 through 10. It's one case. 7 is ordinance to rezone property located southwest of 63rd. Gerard Streets from R3, R5, and GC to R3 single family residential district, medium density. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Eight is resolution of the revised preliminary plat entitled Country Club Hills is hereby accepted. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Nine is resolution that the plat entitled Country Club Hills is hereby approved. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. And 10 is a subdivision agreement providing for public improvements, watershed, management fees, sewer connection, the Omaha Sanitary Sewer is hereby approved. Public hearing on agenda items number 7, 8, 9, and 10 begin now. Are there any proponents? <clears throat> yes, Mr. President, members of the council, Douglas Greeson, 10836 Old Mill Road. I'm here with the applicant, Sean Negus. We're in the audience to answer any questions you may have. This is a 15-lot a subdivision south of Girard Street that is uh, redeveloping some abandoned railroad right away just northeast of the Emanuel Hospital. Uh, lot 15 is, is for a church. The other 14 lots will be single family residential. And again, we'll be here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. This is in my district and represents a um, kind of a long discussion between the neighborhood and the developer as to making sure this works for everyone. Uh, I commend both of them on all their work together and making sure we got to this point. And I think we do have a reasonable compromise that works for the neighborhood, but also recognizes that the benefit of um, this construction. Uh, so what we have here today is rezoning primary plat and a subdivision agreement. But another significant part of that discussion was a discussion about covenants. So, Mr. Greeson, could you uh, address the covenant situation and whether that can be submitted for the record today or submitted after today's actions, or how, how would that proceed? Uh, we've, res we've submitted draft covenants. We've gone back and forth uh, with the neighbors a couple times, um, and we appreciate the, the, the help the staff and Councilman Festerson's given us in coming to a compromise that I think is acceptable to everyone involved. Uh, I believe the covenants um, that we're actually going to record have been submitted to the city, but if not, we can certainly submit the final draft that everyone agreed upon. Um, at this point, uh, I think we're down to getting this approval 
filing the plat and then filing all of the documents and I think the opponents would agree we're all on the same page at this point. Okay, and you call the, you call the covenants a draft or are they finalized? They're, they're finalized. Okay. We've, been, we've been back and forth and, and the representatives of the neighborhood and the uh, developer have agreed on a set of covenants. Okay, and Mrs. Seelan, you would agree with that too? Okay, Mikey, I see some heads nodding there. Okay, that's very good. And then one last question for you. Um, the I remember asking, asking this question a few months ago, but I want to make sure it's still accurate. This is at um, 63rd and Girard, which is very close to the senior PGA activity that will be happening there in July. And just want to make sure construction will be done uh, in plenty of time for that event to go, out, go off without a hitch. Well, we're we're in the we've got all of the plans approved, and of course this this type of development somewhat subject to weather, but I think uh, with the street being in place, uh, it shouldn't be any problem to get all of the improvements done. Prior to that, obviously we'd like to have for sale signs on the lots during the golf event, so I think we'll make every effort to make that happen. You could probably rent them to Tom Watson and then like, I think, I know, I know they're looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you'd say done by June or? or well, I, I think, um, that's obviously up to the developer, but I don't think there'd be any problem completing all of the work by June. There's, unlike a lot of the subdivisions that come before you, the street work's essentially done. We're really just putting in sewers and a little bit of utility work and some grading, so it should go much faster than the typical subdivision that's presented. Okay, great, thank you. Um, with that, I'll move approval of items seven through 10. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Passed 7 to 0. Item number 11, ordinance to amend the boundaries of the MCC Major Commercial Corridor Overlay District to incorporate in that district the property located at 22145 West Maple Road. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 11 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Granat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's passed 7 to 0. Item number 12, ordinance to amend section 55925 of the Municipal Code regarding building two setback lines. A, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 12 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Passed 7 to 0. Item number 13, resolution to preliminary plat entitled Sorensen Place, located northeast of 60th Street and Sorensen Parkway, along attached conditions, hereby accepted in preparation. Final plat is hereby authorized. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 13 begins now. Are there any proponents? Hi, hey, Arun Agarwal, 626 North 164th Street here in Omaha. Uh, just here to answer any questions. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to be very brief. Um, we've had several meetings with the uh, with the residents. Uh, Mr. Agarwal has been at all of them. As a matter of fact, Mr. Agarwal has, has uh, officiated over them. And what we're talking about today is primarily probably about 60 to 65 percent of that area. Um, uh, the area that was in question? The, yeah. Uh, roughly 25 percent. Yeah, roughly 25 percent of the area that's in question is not a part of this effort today. Um, this is just for the storage facilities and several other uh, amenities that, you know, we're continuing to talk through. Uh, this, yeah, this is just the preliminary plot. Yeah, the preliminary plot. So we're, you know, this is, you know, and we've had, and the neighbors, I think, are on board with where we are so far. So um, th this is just an effort to move that forward. So, and, and again, I would like to thank Mr. Agarwal for making an investment in the eastern part of our city. Mr. Thompson. Yes, uh, I too, uh, I've gone way back with, uh, with Arun, and I remember when the city, uh, doing the days when the city wasn't quite uh, working with you the way that we should have. 
but uh, I've always said that um, a lot of growth is going on out west, and I appreciate that growth. But while everyone else was going out that way, I saw you make a conscious effort to do the infill in the inner city. And so uh, you were one of the leaders there, and I just thank you once again going on record as saying thank you for having that vision. Um, there is an area out in Elkhorn that could use you. <laughs> so if you ever want to venture out there, there's a little bit of a depleted area out there that could use your help also. Thank you, sir. I appreciate the support. Mr. Jerem. You know, a moment ago I made a few comments about a lot of people being in the room that do a lot of things behind the scenes to help and address in this effort to try to build an environment for peace. And here you have somebody, one of the most humble of the group, who owns the building that is now home to our Heartland Workforce Solutions, where a lot of people who don't have job skills are now getting trained to go back to work, and a person who, without remuneration of any kind, serves uh, on our library board to try to provide extra access to those who are um, poor, don't have um, access to educational opportunities to keep our libraries open longer, puts in a lot of t extra time after uh, that to do finance issues and studies for the library. So I just wanted to say, you know, here's another example of someone from the community who cares deeply about the community and these issues and who's working on several different levels besides what you see here today. So this has the merits and stands upon its own and should pass probably unanimously here in a second on this preliminary plat, but there's other things Here's just an example of how timely is this that he's here today. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Ado adopted 7 to 0. Thank you. Item number 14, resolution of special use permit application uh, for a to allow a large group living in a CC community commercial district located at 111 11M Street is hereby approved. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 14 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted 7 to 0. Liquor, item number C, Garat Steakhouse, 4917 Center Street, Class C liquor license, new application, old location. Public hearing on agenda item number 15 begins now. Are there any proponents? Jim Dunn, 104, or 804 Loveland Drive, Omaha. I'm the applicant. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Jeremy. Yes, I'd just like to uh, welcome you to Center Street from Dodge. Thank you. And uh, I've been watching what you've been doing. You've been cleaning up the place, put the window back in on the east side, spiffed up your sign. So tell us a little bit about what's going to happen on the inside and when we might expect to all go out there and help support your new venture. Uh, we are looking at uh, maybe in two weeks opening, and uh, we basically are keeping Graz as Graz, uh, staying Graz Steakhouse, and uh, we're going to be doing uh, steaks as our our uh, primary. Uh, we've teamed up with Omaha Steaks to be providing hopefully good steaks, and uh, we're we're toning the menu uh, more towards uh, a lot of uh, uh, salad entrees and. Uh, so it is also hopefully going to become a little bit more affordable for uh, a weekly visit rather than a monthly visit. So we hope around the 17th. Mr. Thompson. Yes, uh, Jane, uh, I know that you have some very uh, tasty things over on the Dodge Street side. And if you could uh, take some of those over to the new garage. Uh, I think you had best of both worlds because um, uh, I've enjoyed your 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 dining at your old place too. So well, thank you, my partner and the new manager of uh, who is uh, going to be in front of you in a few is going to be doing uh, uh, the exact same things that uh, she and I have done uh, throughout the time, and she is now uh, with her brother going to be the proud proprietors of Goldberg's. So thank you. All right. 
Roll call. Uh, Council Member Grenets out of the chambers. Uh, Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted six to zero. We'll take items 16 and 17 together. Uh, McKenna's Blues, Booze, and Barbecue, 7425 Pacific Street, Class C liquor license, no application, no location, and 17 is a catering license for the same applicant at the same location. Public hearing on agenda items number 16 and 17 begin now. Are there any proponents? Hi, my name is Vince Vaccaro. I'm the new owner of McKenna's, and I am the proponent. Thank you, sir. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Thompson. Yes, uh, Vince. Welcome to the neighborhood. Uh, Thank you. It's a place right down from my house, and I frequent it a lot. Very and good. hopefully some of the uh, old menu will creep into the new management. <laughs> but uh, it's a great place. And, and thanks uh, also for having that extra area where you allow it to, you know, to be for like some of the political functions that I've had over the years. The Blues Hall. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very um, good. Move the approval. Second. Roll call. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray, yes. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Mr. President. Yes. And it's adopted six to zero. Item number 18, Goldberg's 25008 Dodge Street request permission to appoint Kimberly DiLorenzo manager. Public hearing on agenda item number 18 begins now. Are there any proponents? Kimberly Duda DiLorenzo, 6737 Leavenworth Street. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerem. Yes, I just want to um, wish you well as you now, I guess, Jean's going south or? Well, not uh, my family's owned it since the very beginning, so I've been there since the beginning. Jean's just moving on. Same great menu under your Yeah, it's the same that we've done since we right. began. Look forward to keep going there. Thank you. Please do. Mr. Thompson. Uh, it's a great hangout for you and all students. Oh, well, good. So Thank we you. appreciate that too. Thank you. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat's back in the chambers. Grenat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's approved Thank seven you. to zero. Uh, consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause an item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed consent agenda shall be taken out by city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 19 through 22 were held on November the 20th, 2012. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Grenat? Gray, yes. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Mr. President. Yes. They're all passed seven to zero. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 23 through 25 and 27 through 31 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Public hearing is closed. Oh, here, comes a, here comes the light. Oh. Sorry. I guess that's me. Patty McAtee, I'm uh, with agenda number 28, item number 28. I'm with the Greater Omaha Chamber, 1301 Harney, and I am a proponent and here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay. Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Agenda items 23 through 25 and 27 through 31 have been adopted 7 to 0. Item number 26, resolution that the attached City of Omaha Public Works Department towing rules for snow emergencies and construction zones are hereby adopted and approved. Public hearing on agenda item number 26 begins now. Are there any proponents? Uh, Scott McIntyre, 5225 Dayton Street. I'm the street maintenance engineer, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have on this policy. Scott, would you mind just uh, maybe telling the uh, public here what the 
intention is? I mean, what, what are our expectations here with uh, changing uh, this? Uh, the, the, these are ordinances and policies that have been on the books for a while. Uh, the the uh, odd even parking plan has been on the books for a couple years now. Uh, we, we've had the authority to tow cars that were parked in violation of the emergency snow ordinance. Uh, that's been on the books for well over 10 years. We are we're simply, uh, it's kind of administrative. We're, we're complying with your requirement to bring this policy forward present it to you for discussion. Uh, basically, the, what we are going to do, uh, if warranted, is tow cars that are either blocking streets or are, in, uh, are not complying with the snow emergency parking regulations. Um, if it's a vehicle that's not complying with the, the odd even side of the street parking regulation that would go into effect on the uh, east side of 72nd Street, uh, that vehicle is typically going to be towed within the neighborhood to another residential street. If it's a vehicle that, uh, for example, may be parked on a, or not parked, but abandoned on a major street because of uh, weather conditions, uh, the driver couldn't, couldn't move it, and, it, and it's a, a hindrance to traffic, a hindrance to our plowing operation, it will either be uh, towed to the impound lot uh, which provides a secure place for that, that car to be held. Um, or um, if, if we determine that we have a, a number of vehicles that, that can't be towed to the impound lot in a timely manner, we'll tow them to some nearby location that, that, that we will go out and identify. Okay. So I think, uh, I think the, what we are hearing here today is that there's a, basically a change and uh, if, if we do have a snow emergency or if we do have a situation where we've got heavy snows and if your car's missing, <laughs> you need to kind of go hunt for it. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, I, I'm just trying to make this as clear as I can to, to people that may be at some point in time impacted by this. Sure. And, and uh you know, if it's in a residential area, we're going to make every effort to tow that car uh, someplace where it's it's within, you know, with within the vision of someone uh, who who was coming out to where that that car was parked on the street. Hopefully, across the street, you know, maybe take it down half a block. Um, so, you know, we would hope that people would look around a little bit, knowing you know that they weren't in compliance with the odd even parking regulation and see if their car has been moved a short distance. Um, but if they don't see it, they, they, can, they can call uh, Public Works and, and we will we'll have maintained a log of where vehicles were, were moved to and, and we can provide that information to the owner of the vehicle. What number should they call? Do you have that? Um, sure. That's the 444-4919 number. All right. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Thompson. Yes, just a quick uh, commentary here. I know people are going to say, well, you know, I have got to search a couple of blocks to find my car, but keep in mind that the other alternative is you, you could pay anywhere from $150 to $300 getting it out of, out of tow. So it's really a small inconvenience. And then um, when you compare the two alternatives, but also, uh, this is not something that's set in stone. We're just trying it. We're going to try it for a while, and then we'll see what happens. And we can always come back and tweak it later and fix it. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's the, it's the better alternative, and it's an ongoing process. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Jerem. Yes, and um, one thing I want you to know that I'm very supportive of your efforts to improve on the snow removal, particularly in, in District 3. I've heard nothing but good things about the strides that you've made and A, speeding up the snow removal, and I think that the use of contractors has helped you tremendously in that regard. Uh, B, publicizing through uh, some television commercials that we've seen, your uh, website, through social media and Facebook, and you have a Twitter uh, account that blasts alerts. You have an application on people's mobile phones now, uh, all in the last couple of years. And 
I would just encourage you to continue that as you seek to publicize this tweak to um, how you're going about things and to let neighborhood leaders know like you've done on the other things. So. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. Item number 32, resolution the revised actuarial contribution rate is hereby approved as shown on the attached report prepared by the Kavanaugh McDonald Consulting LLC. Public hearing on agenda item number 32 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7 8, due to no meetings being held December 25th and January 1st, agenda items number 33 through 34 should be laid over five weeks to January 8th, 2013, for publication of public hearing. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, the public hearing agenda items number 35 through 40 shall be held on the third reading. Ordinances on second reading, item number 41, or is declared necessity of acquiring pr private property for the purpose of constructing the Miller Park to Pershing Detention Basin Sewer Separation Project. Public hearing on agenda item number 41 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? <coughs> public hearing is closed. Item number 42, ordinance authorizing a purchase order at Abe Trash Services for price agreement for rubbish. <coughs> Container <coughs> services at various street maintenance facilities. Public hearing on agenda item number 42 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 43, ordinance of necessity of appropriating property located in the Omaha campus for Hope Redevelopment Plan Amendment 1 area. Public hearing on agenda item number 43 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 44, ordinance approving a redevelopment tax center financing loan agreement with the Nebraska Furniture Mart Incorporated to implement the NFM office building tax haven financing redevelopment project plan at the project site located at 808 South 74th Plaza and 727 South 75th Street. Public hearing on agenda item number 44 begins now. Are there any proponents? Bridget Hadley, City Planning, here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, President. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 45, ordinance proven agreement for the sale of city-owned real property. Uh, the city is authorized to in, enter into an agreement with the Habitat for Humanities of Omaha Incorporated to convey the property located at 18th and Corby Streets. Public hearing on agenda item number 45 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 46, ordinance to grant a permanent easement for property near 24th Street and Reddick Avenue to the MUD. Public hearing on agenda item number 46 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 47, ordinance to accept the bid and approve a lease agreement between Dillon Brothers, Harley Davidson, and the city for 16 Harley Davidson motorcycles for use by the Ohio Police Department over a six year period. Public hearing on agenda item number 47 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 48, ordinance to approve an agreement between the city and uh, Raymond Fedoni. Uh, for the position of Project Safe Neighborhoods Director of Operations. Public hearing on agenda item number 48 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 49, ordinance to approve the acceptance and authorized payment for the U.S. Department of Justice grant for the Omaha Reentry Integrative Service and Engagement Initiative. Public hearing on agenda item number 49 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item number 50, ordinance to waive the provision of Municipal Code Section 15-2, prohibiting the sale of alcoholic liquor other than beer before 12 noon on Sunday to authorize the sale and of distilled spirits commencing at 7 a.m. at Maplewood Lanes, 3030 30 North 101st Street on Sunday, February 24, 2013. 
Public hearing on agenda item number 50 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7C, the public hearing on agenda items number 51 through 60 shall be held on the second reading. Pursuant to City Council Rule 70, agenda item number 61 shall be laid over two weeks for publication and public hearing. On the supplement, pursuant to City Council Rule 70, agenda item number 63 shall be laid over two weeks for publication and public hearing. And pursuant to City Council Rule 7C, the public hearing agenda items number 64 through 65 shall be held on the second reading. Roll call. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. 3.05 p.m. 